Well, I'm sporting my uh, Neville R. Standardbreds hat here tonight. I uh, hit a little nap this afternoon. Uh, hit a little nap this afternoon. We broke 13 babies from Lexington today. We're going to be putting some videos up on uh, up on uh, Facebook later on. I'd love to send them to you. But I don't know how to send them on the stableca.com um, or post them on the stable.ca. We'll figure that out in a day or so. Curtis had a vacation and went down to PEI for a couple of days. His wife's a, uh, I don't know the proper word, a flight attendant, but I know it's a more technical word for that now. But um, very diff difficult job. I, I didn't realize the extensive training they had until she told me. Anyway, they, they went to PEI. Obviously, when, uh, when you have that job, you and your family can fly at cost. So I don't blame her. They, they went to, uh, to PEI for a week. I think Curtis said it was either Europe or PEI. <laughs> PEI. So that's good. That'd be awesome. I, I, I know Amy and I enjoy traveling. The kids enjoy traveling. So good for Curtis and Jamie to get away. The downside is there can't be a lot of editing and stuff done the next couple of days. Curtis is coming back Thursday night. Friday, we are going to London. Now, a lot of you have been emailing me about London. Hey, Anthony, what hips are you looking at? Let me put all my cards on the table, just so it's fair for everybody. Uh, we now have 46 yearlings. We have five, I believe, four or five that have to come in privately already still. So we're up over 50 already. I'm not, I'm not uh, concerned with the numbers, and I'll tell you why in a little while. Obviously, we had a lot of flack last year from people outside the stable saying, you're growing too quick, you're going to collapse, you're not going to be able to train the horses down well, we had the best year of our lives, so I think we proved them wrong. We're getting in the habit of proving people wrong in this industry, and um, I'm not concerned with the numbers. We have some great people working for us now. I, I said it quietly in a, in a video the other day, there'll be a press release in a little while. Mario Bergeron has joined the stable team. He's now one of our trainers. You might say, well... Mario Bergeron's a driver. He's older. He doesn't drive that much anymore. Mario Bergeron is about an 18th generation horseman. Uh, the Bergeron family are synonymous in, in Quebec and in racing in general um, in in, uh, in regards to their, his driving. But horsemanship overall, just a tremendous horseman. And uh, he's always there early. He's the opposite of me. He's there He's there like an hour early for everything. I get there in the morning. He's like, Con, we're going to go with the babies. He went with effusive before I got there today to video him. So we'll have a video tomorrow for you of Effusive. We have all the 13 that we bought on the weekend are all broke and all jogging today. Some jogged yesterday, but they all jogged today. We had videos of almost all of them are going to post on Facebook. I don't know how to pay, post things, um, obviously, on the stableca.com or, or whatnot. We'll get that all done for you. Moving on. Uh, so all things on the table. Um, what I'm looking at is, is simply put this. I still have a lot of shares from Ohio that I'm on the hook for. Um, we did sell a lot, of, a lot of shares in Lexington. Probably, as I said from the outset, we spent more in, we spent less in Lexington than I thought. We bought more horses in Lexington than I thought we would. And we sold more shares in, in Lexington than I thought we would exiting Lexington. So thank you very much for, for buying up the shares. I think we had a great sale ourselves at stable.ca. We went down there and did exactly what I said we do. We implemented the plan I said we were going to. We were going to buy some Sunshine Beaches. We were going to buy some Art Speaks. We ended up with a couple of Father Patricks and Angus Hall and Archangel. We had a great sale. For a sale, it was crazy, ridiculously high. The first two days and the last two days, there was a little lull in the middle. Um, we did really, really well. Uh, so I'm, I was very, very happy with that. Having said that, this sale is right on the heels of Lexington. So I'm going to make a pledge to everybody out there. I have a list. I have a list of 37 horses I'm going to inspect Friday morning. Curtis will be back. We will do the videos on all of them. The videos are going over well, by the way. I appreciate the kind remarks, um, even by horsemen outside of the stable. Like, you know, they're really helpful. I think they might have been really helpful for some of the breeders looking at the prices. <laughs> I talked really highly of that one filly that I really wanted. I thought she would uh, she'd bring about twenty or thirty thousand, and she went for two hundred. So I'm not saying that that was us, but there are some odd prices <laughs> out there, and there's about two hundred views on some of those some of those yearling videos. So I'm glad I'm glad we made some new clients, uh, made some new, uh, had some new partners, some new clients added from Lexington, which it worked out really well. And um, we made some people uh, we we met some people that want to buy horses with us, hopefully in Harrisburg also. This is London. This is four city yearling sale coming up this Friday. Last year, four city somewhat looked like a bit of an orphanage 
compared to Lexington, which sounds funny and ridiculous, but um, it's just the way it was. The horses look a lot better this year, a lot of them. And I see 37 that I put on my list of the 37. Obviously, I'm going to give you 20 tonight that I rather liked and I find very, very interesting. The sun's going down and this camera keeps going out of focus. Um, I'm going to give you a list of 20 we're going to look at. We're going to run through some news real quick, obviously. What is this camera doing? Oh, uh, we're going to run through the news real quick. Uh, some news because I didn't get a video of all the horses last week. And I apologize about that. Hopefully you understand. Uh, we had a lot going on and it would have just... I, I had trouble updating everybody on what was going on in real time, let alone what was happening around the stable. And you can always email me. Please don't feel that I'm too busy to send a text message to or an email to. Yes, I'm a little slow responding at night and in the morning right now because we have the, I'm getting some sleep, I'm trying to get some sleep, and then we are uh, breaking the yearlings in the morning today. We qualifiers and schoolers on top of that. So I am a little tardy today in responding to my emails, but I will get to them. And I would rather somebody send me an email than break down and finally say, hey man, I haven't had an update in, on boldness. Boldness is training. Been in 218 or 220. I'm going to bring them up to the top barn and try and finish them off myself as we have racehorses coming back in for Kevin. So that's likely what's going to happen with him. And we're sending out messages. Amy sending out messages on every horse uh, tonight moving forward. I like that better. Anyway, a few headlines going on right now. Obviously, Sunshine Finest uh, raced great the other night. You know, I had somebody email me and say, James, you know, what did he do? Let's just break down the race real quick. Uh, we didn't want the horse on the front end again. James had said that. I had said that. Harry had said that. So James was going to drive him conservatively. We were sh we were comfortable that he would make it in the final, but he did have to do okay. James got away in the four hole. Why would he come first over on the four to five favorite with a horse that we're trying to freshen up for the final race of the year? So I'm glad he didn't move the horse. Louis Philippe Wall was in front of us, picked for third or fourth favorite, same as we were, and he walked. He didn't just get tired. He collapsed in the last turn. James got spit out the back. Eighth coming out of the turn. Sunshine's Finest was flying at the wire. Beat a nose for third. They went 51. He paced 52 in the mud. He raced great. That's a great mile going into the super final. He drew the middle to the outside of the gate, six or seven, I believe, going for two and a quarter. Now, Stag Party drew the rail. That's great. Um, there's some good horses in there. I think Sunshine's Finest is in the mix. And coming into the race sharp as a tack. So I am very, very happy with what James did last week. Sunshine's Finest couldn't be sharper right now and feeling better. Hoping for a good final. He's banked sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 this year. Good for him. I mean, for a horse that, that trained down like an okay horse, you know, we've had a lot of horses that trained down great and just didn't show up. Linnea didn't show up this summer. Fought battle sickness and virus and allergies all summer. Both the Time All horses looked like they were going to compete. Time All Tulo made it into the final. He drew... I don't know where he drew. You might look at the sheet and say, where's Anthony? Anthony's in Ohio with West 52nd. He's going to be racing for $60,000 in the consolation at Northfield Park on Saturday night. You thought our great year in Ohio was over? Almost. Still got one more start left. And he looked great the other day. I trained him in 159 on Monday by himself at Mohawk. We've been trying to get a race into him, but it's tough. Tough to get a race into a, into a horse like him. I didn't want to race him in the four-year-old maiden. <laughs> I didn't want them going in 56 in front of him struggling. I would rather train him in 159 and come 27 and 4 wrapped up than, than uh, have him go a mile in 58 five days for the race with his tongue out chasing horses. I don't think he's going to have to trot super fast on Saturday to get a big chunk of money. So I stand by what we did. We schooled him in 2-2. Um, on Friday when I got home, I got, I got to the track just as he was going by the half. Brett McDonald went with him and drove him great. Uh, just let him trot on the end of the mile. Then I come back Monday, train him in 59, last quarter and 27 in a piece, and he looked good. He's going into the last start of the year, shockingly not tired, and, that I can see, and uh, and sharp. So, so fingers crossed for that. Time all too low, obviously made the final. He's racing for 225,000. Is he going to get money for sure? No. He's tired, but he's tough. Horse banged out another, another horse banged out $40,000. Everybody says, well, you paid, you know, you paid 30 for him. Okay, we still have him. We still own him. We're going to race him when he's three, maybe even four. That's the thing is that you guys have to understand is that these two-year-olds are two-year-olds. We're prepping them for the rest of their life. This isn't it. It's not over. The roller coaster isn't over. I'm just getting to the top of the second hill. 
that's what's great about this. We got some really nice horses that have shown a lot this year and look like they're going to have a great three-year-old season. And that's what makes me the most excited about horses like Taimo Houdini. Yeah, we put him away tired. I wish we didn't, but that's the way it is. He's resilient and he'll come back. And for me, you know, we got some really, really nice horses in this barn. I'm going to run through some of them just in one minute. We do have some tragic, not tragic news, upsetting news. White Tiger blew something out of his foot. They were trying to get him healed up. They x-rayed him. They said, there might be a line in that foot. Might be a line in that foot. Here's the thing. There might be a line. There might not be a line. He's going to need three or four weeks. Something blew out of his foot. If we can't prep him for the Breeders' Crown, why are we going? And really, that was the argument we were having. Andrew had told me down in Lexington, he blew something out of his foot. Oh, good. Good. Perfect. How is he? Good. I trained him with cruising in style the other day. He trained well. I said, okay, perfect. Uh, he called me today. He said, still a little pinchy on that foot. I got it x-rayed and the vet thinks there's a line in there. Now, the line, the, the, the feet are extremely... If you're a radiologist, you can read it and say, I think there's a line here. I think there's a line there. He said there's a line in his foot. He thinks there's a line in his foot. Regardless if the line's there or the line's not, if it's a pus pocket, a quarter crack, if we can't prep him for the Breeders' Crown in two weeks, which is this weekend, can't race him in against those horses. So it's a no-brainer. White Tiger's year is done. Not racing in the Breeders' Crown, which is a little heartbreaking, but at the same time... We have to do what's right for the horse. I mean, this horse made $150,000, most of it in American money this year. Probably socked away about 175 Canadian for a horse that we gave 20000 or something for last year in Harrisburg. Pretty damn good. And I know, as I said, there's a lot of you out there that own pieces of horses that didn't race. Where's Delcar Star Angel? Where's King of the Ball? You know, these horses are coming also. King of the Ball qualified today. Delcar Star Angel schooled today. So, and our Vicar raced last night, finished fifth. You know, I think a lot of people might have been let down by that. She tried it in 58 and 2, or 58 flat. Race decent. Uh, probably going to race her two or three more times and kick her out. We, if these horses aren't mature, you're not going to see their best miles out of them. It's just the way it is. And our Vic is close. She's close to getting there, but not quite. I think a couple more starts. She's smart, though. She understands what she's out there to do. Probably race her on a smaller track her next start. Likely put a mark on her. Race her once or twice more at Mohawk and shut her down. And shut her down fresh and sharp for the three-year-old season. Lawmaker will be heading to the Breeders' Crown. He'll be qualifying this weekend. I'm going to fly to, I believe, the Meadowlands on Saturday morning to qualify him and then go to Ohio and race Saturday night and then come back here for the sale, the last part of the sale, Sunday. So as we talk about these horses I'm looking at, we're going to go down, do videos on them Saturday, set hard lines, and we're going to call Steve Palermo back out of the bullpen again. He was the one, him and Amy, were doing the bidding for us, did a great job. Uh, on day three in Lexington, picked up some great horses in Harness AM and uh, Fuss Pod, horses that I wanted, and they did great, great work. You, you have to understand the dynamics of a sale, and we'll get into that sometime. You guys want to know how, how an auction works and the intricacies of it and what the sale bidder, the sale spotters, the bid spotters do sometimes. That's over tea or beer or something, but I'm not going to get into that right now. We're going to run through the rest of them. Cruising in style, a little bit of a... a tug of war going on right now some people want him to go to the breeder's crown i don't own any of the horse anymore i'm indifferent um he may not go he may go he may not go we'll know in the next 24 hours and then make a decision on cruising in style he's had a great year too he's put he's got almost 200,000 made now he's going to be a really nice four-year-old he's got a lot of weight to pack on my personal opinion is taking him to the breeder's crown is not going to hurt i'm sure he's going to be a long shot it's going to be a great experience for a lot of people but he's just below that top plateau of trotters but he's gonna have to get there and the only way he can get there is racing against them so yes it's 7500 american dinner probably a lot of people don't want to and i don't blame them it's looking that maybe we won't go uh, but we'll see it's not the end of the world he's a good horse and he's going to be a good racehorse for us moving forward no shame going or not going no shame in what has taken place with cruising in style in 2018 uh, we talked about white tiger and west 52nd now Back to what I had mentioned quickly in the middle. People said, oh, you, you grew too big. Maybe the last year before we bought all the horses. Oh, don't get too big. You're not going to be able to train the horses down good. Just going to give you a quick little rundown. Illinois, we had not an angel. Second in the final. Holding steady, won his first stake race. Put away about 20 some thousand dollars And then we shut him down because he was a little tired in the middle of the summer. He was a big, heavy colt. And then we had Ivanka, who won the consolation. Two minutes, took a lifetime mark doing it. That was Illinois. We bought three. We raced three. Indiana, 
we had obviously Swandre the Giant. Bay Jewel didn't show up the way I thought she would. Swandre the Giant did, and then some. That was Indiana. He went seven for seven, uh, eight for nine now in Indiana. New York, cruising in style. Held his own. The only horse we raced in New York. He did good all summer long. PA, Pennsylvania, White Tiger set a world record. Equal to world record. World record in doing it. Two-year-old geldings on a 5 8 mile track. Stonebridge Simba put away $52,000 and did well doing it. And, of course, Lawmaker, probably one of our pillar horses, raced good all year, was fourth in the Canadian Trotting Classic, was third in the Beal. He is heading to the Breeders' Crown. We went from three potentially starting in it to one. But one is still a big, big feat. Then we hit Ohio, our biggest state, one we went right back to with, uh, I don't know, we had like 13 horses there. We had Oso Pine, just got beaten 57 in Delaware's last start. One of the leading Colts in Ohio this year. Yes, another one of the leading Colts in Ohio this year. In fact, he finished ahead of Oso Pine in points leading into the final. West 52nd, didn't have a great year. He's racing for 60 on Saturday. Put away about 25,000. Just had a lot of rough luck this year, but a very, very nice horse in his own right. Twinsburg had a big year. See you in Tuscany, had an incredibly big year. These are the jurisdictions we bought them into. I don't like to talk about returns because it's not fair. And anybody can say, what about the other ones? I'm going to give you a quick little run through. Oso Pine was 13,000 and made 100. Yes, was 16,000 and made 70 some. West 52nd was 24. Made 25 is a loss for a two year old year. Twinsburg was 12. She made 40 or 50. And CU in Tuscany, same thing, made 40 or 50. And he was a $9,500, $10,000 purchase. Same with Illinois. Pennsylvania. I'm not going to do this. At the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. The stable did, the CA did very, very well in 2018. I'm proud of what we did, proud of what we built, proud of the accomplishments we we uh, we made, and that's all due to you. So, on to the sales. We're going to run through some horses quick that we're going to be doing the, the videos on. We did 76 videos in Lexington, and uh, it went over swimmingly, went over very, very well. So, does anybody say swimmingly anymore? I don't think so. Anyway, I'm going to run through 20. I'm going to give you 20 horses that I like in the London sale, and I'm going to try and do it in 14 minutes. So, number one, first, number 24, Stonebridge Excel. Might know this guy. This is a full sister, half sister, a half sister to Stonebridge Simba. It's going to take a lot of money to buy this horse. We're going to be putting together a couple of groups because a lot of these horses on this list are probably decently expensive horses. So we are going to be putting together groups. Number 24 is the first one on our list, Stonebridge Excel. This is a sister to Stonebridge Simba. Obviously some sentimental value there. Number 55 is next, Stonebridge Bon Bon. This is a Cadabra Colt out of a sister to Creamy Mimi. First full out of Stonebridge Brulee who raced moderately when she was young. So this is another Cadabra Colt filly. This is a Cadabra filly, a big filly. I watched all these videos, a lot of big horses in here. Now, obviously I gotta get down there and video them and look at them, but uh, we're gonna be looking at number 55, Stonebridge Bon Bon, number 58. I got the looks. This is an EL Titan, an EL, we haven't got one of those yet. An EL Titan Trotting Colt out of uh, Pretty Crafty. Ooh, that was a good mare. Pretty Crafty, a second dam is a dam, a digital image, third dam, Appleby Dream Bell. You see these in Canada anyway, these, these bloodlines showing up everywhere. It's starting to get dark. My camera's starting to not work well. So this is I Got The Looks, number 58. Next, we get number 67. Number 67 is Shiraz Sealster. This is a Better's Delight filly. Beautiful filly, beautiful video. Second dam is she's a fan. She was a nice filly. I really liked her. So this is a first full out of Shakaya Hanover. Next, we are going to go to number 115. This is going to jump around a little bit. I had two lists here. I'll tell you about that in a second. Number 115 is Canadian Titan. This is an EL Titan filly. Good looking filly also. Out of Canadian Magic by Cadabra. Second dam is the dam of Twiggy's Twick. The third dam is the dam of Caesar. Good pedigree here. Really, really good video. Good looking horse. Number 115, Canadian, Canadian Titan. I should have put these in numerical order and I apologize, I did not. Number 139, 139, Larry Just Larry. That's a great name. 
Larry, just Larry, is a ready for is a royalty for life. The royalty for life's are not going to sell well this year. They were thought poorly about last year. We had War We Ultra, a filly who had bad luck, simply had bad luck, and I believe uh, um, if we buy these horses for the right price, they are going to be. Uh, I think they're going to show up. This is a second foal out of an Angus Hollomare East Side. Second dam is Australian stock. I know that horse somehow. Cross of Lorraine, that's Carl Jameson's old mare. Candor Hanover in the third dam. Very good very good video and a very good looking, very good looking colt. This is a ready for life, ready royalty for life colt. Larry, just Larry, number 139. Number 151 is, hold on now. Yeah, I'm going to say you didn't have a video. I know I watch this horse's video. 151 is Ripley Muscles. This is a muscle mass, half-brother to totally ripped, who I raced against quite a bit. Uh, second dam is a dam of McCall Magic. This is a very, very good family. Source might bring good money because he had a great video. Ripley Muscles, number 151. Number 185 is Filmmaker Mike. It's a good-looking Colt. Uh, he's a thinking out loud Colt and looked very, very good in his video. Again, take it for what it's worth. I want to get down there. I can't really give any definitive answers or any... I'm not going to stick my neck out for anything until we actually video them and look at them. We're going to video all of them. This is number 185, Filmmaker Mike. Number 196. 196 is Moana. Moana is a muscle mass filly out of and over the top. The second dam is a dam of pure ivory. I really like the video on Moana, number 196. And she'll be one of the ones we'll be looking at very early when we get there. Number 222. Uh, 222. Number 222 is. Keeps coming up. 22. Don't make me break this. Okay. 222. Two, two. Thank you. Proud Look. Proud Look is an Angus Hall Colt. Half sister, half brother to Holy Moly Maggie, who I raced. She was okay. But it's made to order. Glad you asked. And second damn. Good family here. Decent family. I get this horse ranked higher. Uh, but. Comes in, uh, comes in about 8th, 9th, 10th, 12th from the top. Number 222. Number 247 is Time After Time. Now, the problem with Time After Time, why did I put this horse on the list? There's no video for this horse. This is a wheeling and dealing, uh, a wheeling and dealing filly. I knew the family muscle matters. Second M, West Side Lindy, Citation Lindy. Good family here. Have not seen the video yet. Absolutely important. I take a look at this horse, obviously. I think this horse snuck on the list by accident. And the flyer. The flyer of the sale is one of the last horses in the sale, if not the last horse. It's a War We Needy. People say, oh, War We Needy. War We Needy took a mark at 146 and was a very, very fast horse. This is, now, here's the trick about this horse. This is why I like this horse. Second dam is War We Ideal, War We Lad, good horses. The first dam, the mare was bred to Jeremy's Jet, eh. then it was bred to Big Jim and Big Jim. No, no, Shadow Play didn't work well either. This is a War We Needy. Will it work? I have no idea, but it's quite a difference from the first four. This is the fifth out of the mare, I believe. Let me not, I don't want to mis misrepresent this. This is five, fifth full. This is sixth full. So for me, fifth full. For me, uh, keep an eye on this horse. This is what I would call a flyer. Now those were my B list. I'm going to give you run through my A list really quick. Top eight horses I like in the sale. Again, little caveat before I look at them. Uh, before I haven't seen these horses yet, so I have to look at all of them first. Looking at their pedigree, looking at their video, these are the ones that I'm going to look at the very first when we get there. Number 28, Spun from Magic, a Cadabra. This is another one out of a sister to Pure Ivory. Two in the sale, two different sisters fold horses out. This is a muscle mass uh, mare, second foal out of the mare. This one by Cadabra. Her name is, his name is Spun from Magic, a Colt by Cadabra, number 28. Next, number 123. Number 123 is Wara Wee Vulcan. This is a E.L. Titan filly. Her video looked tremendous. Amora Me, Sweet Love, and Overhaul in this family. Very, very well-bred horse. I like what I see here for sure in Wara Wee Vulcan. Next, we have number 126. Number 126 is a muscle mass, ripped and ready. Brother to Professor Gordon, Cuban first and second one, Cajun man. I know this whole family from back in Montreal. Number 126, ripped and ready. Definitely a horse we're going to be taking a look at quickly. Number 172 
Number 172 is JS Miracle Mass, a muscle mass filly. And her breeding's decent. Fantastic video. Really, really like the way this horse moved in its video. This is a filly I thought was great. Not only did I like her video, but I think by her pedigree, she's affordable for us, for anyone. And I believe this is a filly we're really, really going to take a real close eye on. Number 172, JS Miracle Mass. Number 203. 203, Stonebridge Ponder. This is a Better's Delight Colt. Half sister, half brother to Stonebridge Medusa. Pet Rocks in the second dam. Can't remember if we bought a pet, one out of the second dam as Pet Rock or we didn't get one. I'm going to have to look. But in Lexington, I either bid or got the final bid on a, a horse. And in the second dam was Pet Rock. I just can't think of who it is off the top of my head. That is number 203, Stonebridge Ponder. The next one is number two. Five, six, two, five, six is Tamagami Sealster. This is a Sunshine Beach Colt, brother to Titus Sealster. I'm not done with the Sunshine Beaches yet. I know somebody said, oh, you got a lot of Sunshine Beaches. I'll buy as many as you want to give away. You want to keep selling them for less than what they're worth? We'll keep buying them. Sunshine Beach didn't do us any harm. Sunshine's fine as Sunshine Inn. You might say, well, Sunshine Inn did nothing. <coughs> yes, but Sunshine Inn didn't have a chance. Sunshine Inn got sick. He had allergies all summer. We're going to try and combat that in a three-year-old season. From where I sit, from where I stand, we had two really nice sunshine beaches of the two we broke. I'm more than happy to scoop up the Philly Temagami Sealster if we can. Number 257, right next door, is Warwee Vicky. This is a royalty for life Philly. Second dam is Alley Hall. Third dam is the dam of Amigo Hall. This is a very, very good family. I like it very much. We've had some luck with this family. And this is a filly we're going to be looking at. War We Vicky, number 257. Last horse on my list is Messier Sealster. This looks, this, this colt looks massive in this video. Looks huge. He's a thinking out loud colt, the half brother to Maxim Sealster. Western Graduate is in the second dam. Very, very good family. One that I'm very interested in. One that you should be very interested in. So, here's the scoop, everybody. Full disclosure, all the cards on the table. If we are going to buy horses in London, I would like people to send me a message and say, Hey, Anthony, here's the picks I like, or I like this horse, or I like that horse. And I will give you the hard line my hard line number on that horse. Obviously, I can't give you the hard line till after I look at the horse on Friday morning, but I will have a hard line for you on Friday. At that point, if we can build 20, 30, 40% interest in any of the horses that are on that list that I like after I video them, they're in play and I'll be happy to buy them. I just gotta be careful this, this fall. I don't wanna get myself in a position where I'm overstretched, where my neck is exposed. As I said, I still own a lot of shares from Ohio, we did really good in Lexington. I want to keep going. I want to keep building this. I, we know we're gonna, probably going to get to 60 yearlings, which is fine with me, but it's going to take a lot of support from a lot of people. I'm not asking anybody to overstretch. I would never, ever ask anybody to do that. That is why we built the stable, so we don't have to overstretch. But if you have interest and you're out there saying, camera, don't do that. If you're out there saying, hey, I'll just wait and see what he buys, you're going to be upset. Because if I don't have enough interest to buy any of these horses, if I don't have people saying I'll buy 5% at that price or 10% or here's a nominal amount that I'm going to put in, I simply can't bid on them. We have Harrisburg coming. Indiana is coming in, in another week or two. I would like to look at Indiana. But if, if we don't have the support, financial support to do it, we can't. It's like anything else in life. We can't do it. We can't do it. So... That's full disclosure, all my cards on the table. I've given you a list of 20. I have another 17 horses on a list. I'm gonna bring you 37 videos Friday morning. I'm gonna upload them. We're gonna take a look at them. I'm gonna give anybody that's looking and asking a hard number, a hard line number on these horses. And then if we can buy some, we're gonna buy some. That'll be up to you. So, thanks everybody for Lexington. I had a tremendous time. It was a great week. It was a great week for the stable. It was a great week for me, my wife, and uh, it's looking like we're going to have a great 2019. Not done with 2018 yet, though. So, for me, Amy, sitting here in the dark, I am going to drive. Oh, i got to get going. I'm going to drive Dance Hall Babe tonight at Mohawk. Hopefully that works out well. She's picked a win and, and the harvest stakes, and I hope it works out great. So, thanks, everybody, again. 
I'll be doing more videos as the week goes on. Obviously, you're going to get a video on Friday. I will do an update video for everybody on the weekend. Make sure we get everybody back on track. Tell everybody where all the horses are. The ones that are turned out, how are they doing? The ones that are in barns, what barns are they in? How are they training? When are they ready to go? And what we're going to be racing soon. Anyway, take care. Sure, we'll talk in the very near future.